Welcome back to the Citadel, guys. So, we continued to explore and learn about everything in this universe last time. Uh, we, we learned a lot about C-Sec and their kind of juxtaposition with the Spectres. How uh, they both kind of believe they're fulfilling similar roles and purposes, but they're going about it in very different ways. We spoke to the head of C-Sec, uh, the Tur uh, a Turian whose name I've, I've just forgotten. There's a lot to remember name-wise. I'm only kind of getting the names of the, all the races down, <laughs> let alone names of individuals outside of our immediate circle. So, uh, But yeah, he was really interesting. I really liked him. He made a lot of good points about the Spectres kind of being untrust uh, as a concept, being a bit kind of flawed. Uh, well, I'll also be in open about how their system was flawed as well, how a lot of paperwork and bureaucracy can kind of get in the way of their aims. But uh, really interesting. We picked up a mission from um, an Asari. Again, names, man. Um, we've still not been able to talk to these kind of computer operator guys. Yeah, Kaden. If you're going to make a Krogan statue, you might as well make it big. Right? It's, a cr it's a Krogan. All oh, right. Why have they got a statue of them? If they went to war with them, are they part of the? Are they like an alliance species now? Where the hell are we? Uh, we're near the Emporium, apparently. Right, that's a vena. Oh, these are all the venas, all these points of interest. Okay. We've got a shop here. Okay, we've got another new... Is that a new race? Yeah, looks like it. A few Asaris. Hello there. Ah, human. This one is greatly pleased to see you here in my decadent emporium. Okay. This guy's like a... Speaking... Why do we look so moody? <laughs> um... Why are you so pleased to see me? Who are you? This one's face name is Delaninder. Though many in this place simply refer to it as Delon. Okay. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase. All of great worth. Um. Are you speaking telepathically? Why do you refer to yourself as this one and it? Oh, that's not what I meant. For the same reason that humans are so inquisitive, it is part of our culture. Specifically, Hanar only refer to themselves in the first person with family or intimates. Fair enough. And we rarely do so with other species. It is just our way. Oh, he, he said... They, uh, oh, they said... The name of the species, I don't know. I missed it. What about your goods? What kind of goods? What exactly do you sell? Only the finest and most luxurious items that credits can buy. That's a bit vague. This one is able to procure almost any item the human would desire. For a price, naturally. Any other personal questions? Who are you? This one's face name oh. is Delaninder. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for yep. purchase. All of great worth. I'll try and buy something then. Show me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. Yep. You will not be disappointed. Have you non-human armors? Oh, for a Turian. Quarian? Oh, we have had reference to Quarians. We've not met one though, right? Have we? We've not met a Quarian. Yeah, I'm sure we have. Ah oh, man, there's just so much swimming around my head, man. 
Um, like, what's the kind of price on this stuff? We're, we're broke as a joke anyway. And none of this stuff is for humans, so... Oh, level up. Uh, we'll come back here when we've got more money and stuff. Right, codex entry. Oh, and I got six level up points, so I should put some stuff into some points into charm, right? 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 Opens charm options in conversations, decreases the cost of items in shops. Great. Charm options in conversations will be grayed out if you don't have a high enough skill rank. Can we can we make this higher? Um, new skill ranks will unlock when you become a spectre. That's such a spoiler. When you become a spectre. So we're going to become a spectre. And as you earn paragon points. Oh, right. Okay, tying it into gameplay then. Um, intimidate options and conversations will be great. Yeah. Opens intimidate will increase his credits gained when selling items. Okay. So I'll put this. I'll put some into charm. There's nothing wrong with being having a bit of charm, right? Okay. Enemies can't use biotic or tech abilities for sh for a short period. Does 50 damage in a six meter radius. So like an AOE. So that's definitely worth getting. Advanced overload. Can use electronic skill on average objects. Does 100 damage in an 8 meter, 8 meter radius, does 400 damage to enemy shields. Makes him 25% more vulnerable to damage for 10 seconds. Okay, that is useful. Yeah, let's get that. You know, if we can pick up abilities then, then sure. Um, how do we get into medicine? And uh, we should probably put one into engineer, right? Should we put two into charm and one into intimidate? Ah, let's just... Yeah, let's... Let's do that. Let's do that. Perfect. Oh, they've leveled up as well. Um, I'll come back to these guys. I've not got the right uh, brain on me for this at the minute. Creds. The standard credit was established by the Citadel's Unified Banking Act as the currency of interstellar trade. The credit has a managed floating has a managed floating exchange rate calculated in real time by the central bank to maintain the average value of all participating currencies. Some regional currencies are worth more than a credit, some less. Hard currency can be stolen or counterfeited, so electronic fund transfers are the norm. More importantly, physical transactions can't be easily tracked, making them ideal for tax evasion or the purchase of illegal goods. When the Alliance joined the Citadel, its various national treasures were linked into the credit network. A human with a bank account of Mexican pesos, Japanese yen or Indian rupees can purchase any item priced in credits at fair market value. All economies that participate in the credit network are required to price items in both local currency and credits. Interesting. Oh, there, there are more. Yeah. The Elcor, are the Hanar, the Hanar, are... the Hanar, the Hanar, are a citadel species known for excessive politeness. They speak with scrupulous precision and take offence at improper language. I've not done a recording check yet. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Hanar are expect that. Hanar that expect to deal with other species take special courses to help them unlearn their tendency to take offence at improper speech. All Hanar have two names. The face name is known to the world. The soul name is kept for use among close friends and relations. Hanar never refer to themselves in the first person in conversation with someone they know on a face name basis. To do so is considered egotistical. So instead they refer to themselves as this one or the impersonal it. Their homeworld, Kaji, has 90% ocean cover and orbits an energetic white star, resulting in a permanent blanket of clouds. Due to the presence of Prothean ruins on the world, many Hanar Hana wor worship them. 
and Hanar myths often speak of an elder race that civilized them by teaching them language. Interesting. So are they they're not an underwater species though, even though their world's ninety percent water. But they I'm not sure if they're communicating with us telepathically or not. I wish that description would have told us more about that. Um can't speak to anyone else. She had uh, uh, this the Hanar had what was your name? Just a shopkeeper. The Hanar had other stuff to sell, but we've got such little money. We'll come back when we're a bit more flush. Flush with the cash. Any goodies in here? Anything we can loot? No? Please? Give me something? No? Okay. Never mind. Okay, let's go and uh, maybe try and find a bar or whatever it was. Oh, this is the bank, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, Volus. Hello there, Barla Von. <gasps> Matt, honestly, I keep pressing click to inter. I keep clicking the mouse to interact. What's this? One of the Earth Clan. Ah, a very famous one. Yes. Hmm. You are the one called Shepherd. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Akuz is truly remarkable. I am amazed each time I hear it. Uh, and who are you? You've got me at a disadvantage here. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Barla Vaughn. My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. Fair enough. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself arrives on the station, I take notice. Good to know. Uh, and how long have you been here, Bala? Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Discreet and efficient. That's my motto. Um, is that legal? Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions remain undisclosed. For example, suppose a Hanar ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanar goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing mm. the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. That, that sounds fair enough to me, to be honest, man. <laughs> but this isn't like a... This is the only way to progress this line of conversation, so... I'm not sure that's your only reason. I imagine they keep your pockets lined as well. Still sounds shady to me. Then we can only hope you will never be cursed with a large enough fortune <laughs> to require my services. Uh, no, I, d I think you... I, think you uh, I kind of agree with you, Barla. You've got a... Uh, Good interest at heart, even though I imagine he's getting paid well for this stuff. Okay, uh, what can you tell me about the Citadel? What's it like living here on the Citadel? The station is, without a doubt, the greatest wonder in the galaxy. It is a technological marvel, but its true splendor goes much deeper than the hull and engines. From the Presidium to the wards, the entire station is a testament to the success of the Council. All the species of Citadel space together in a single strong community. Must be kind of stressful living in that suit the whole time. Uh, can, what can you tell me about the Presidium? What makes the Presidium so special? It is the political center of Citadel space. 80% of all intelligent species in the known galaxy acknowledge the Council's authority on interstellar matters. But only the most powerful and influential species have embassies here on the Presidium. This level of the station is reserved for the elite, Shepard. People like us. <laughs> what about the wards down below? What are the wards like? The cultural heart of the galaxy. 
They pulse with the lifeblood of millions of citizens from dozens of different species. Millions? You never know what you'll find out in the wards, Commander. It's always full of surprises. Fortunately, most of them are pleasant. Millions? Wow, I didn't realize how populated this, how populous this place was. Right, uh, nice talking to you, Bala. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. I like this guy. Okay, the wards. The majority of the Citadel's population lives in the wards, the five massive arms of the station that house the residential and commercial districts. Many galactic races have established cultural enclaves here. Population density and cost of living are extremely high, a key to Earth cities such as Hong Kong and Singapore. The wards are open-topped, with skyscrapers rising from the superstructure. Towers are sealed against vacuum, as the breathable atmosphere envelope is only maintained to a height of about 7 meters. The atmosphere is contained by the centrifugal force of rotation and a membrane of dense colorless sulfur hexafluoride gas held in place by carefully managed mass effect fields. The view from the wards is spectacular. In the background, stars, serp serpent nebula and the nearby blue giant called the Widow move across the sky as the station rotates to stabilize itself. In the foreground, the lights of buildings and vehicles on the opposing ward arms perpetually shine. The Citadel has no real day or night, while the station keeps to standard galactic time for political functions. Businesses rarely close and residents acclimate to sleep and work according to personal need rather than a day-night cycle. Additions and modifications are constantly being constructed though they must stay within certain specifications that will not compromise the operation of the station. Occasionally, the keepers will descend on an area of the woods and move or change the architecture without explanation. Residents have learned to live with these inexplicable intrusions. The keepers. Hmm. With the keepers part of CSEC... No. I mean, this this place must be like a massive target then for those people, because there are those races that refuse to be a part of the of um, of the citadel and the council and everything. This place is, must be like a huge target. I imagine they have immense security systems, but this place would have a huge target on it, right? Right. How do we get to the wards? Uh, we've been to the consort chambers, we've been to the Emporium. Uh, I guess we just kind of head over here, maybe? Is this a dead end? Oh, I thought we were kind of going in this direction. That looks... I don't know, I was going to say that looks maybe like Prothean technology. Uh, I don't want to know, Ashley. Don't tell me. Oh, go on then. Well, art doesn't normally do much for me, but that relay statue, I like. Okay. You're a bit of an oddball, Ashley. Oh, 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 oh. That bug thing? Do not disturb the keepers. Oh, these are the keepers. She just shouted, like, look at that bug thing over there, man. Ashley just... We, I think we should put Ashley's helmet back on. That's it, Ashley. You get... You, you can't talk. You've got your helmet on. No one wants to hear your... ignorant comments. Keepers. Right, we're putting Ashley's helmet back on until she's got a more sensible attitude to interacting with other alien races. <laughs> yeah, so how do we uh, get to the 
to the, the bar and stuff, the bars and stuff in the lower bits. Uh, I really have absolutely no idea. Do we have to interact with one of the fast travel things? Okay, we'll head into the Citadel bit in a second. I'll just test out the fast travel. Keep that helmet on, Ashley. <laughs> Anyone else to talk to down here? The financial district... Have we already been to the wards? Is that where the... The, uh... I don't want to call it a brothel. Ah, okay. Right. Let's go, let's go talk to the council then. Before we can get down to the wards. That suits me perfectly. Let's progress the story a bit. Uh, we can't progress our side quests until we can get to the wards anyway, so... Beautiful. Okay, I guess we're going to talk to the council. Uh, they're not going to be best pleased with us. Uh, I don't think they're going to believe a word we say. So these are the keepers. So I guess no one really talks to them, they don't really have a personal relationship with anyone, but they maintain technology and build things. Uh, rapid, rapid transit travel. Loads of fast travel points. Well, we can't access this either. Bye. Where have I gone? Oh. Gone to the Presidium. We've got really bad cardio. <laughs> I've got to say. Okay, Citadel. Right here. Uh, council even. Please do not disturb the keepers. Fine. Alright, Ashley. I'll take your helmet off. Just don't say anything to offend anybody. Off we go. The council isn't going to ask me any questions, are they? I hope not. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Udina. No, we don't, sir. God, I hope they don't ask Ashley any questions. This might be quite an entrance, so let's take it slow. Autumnal trees. Okay, so we've got... These guys look pretty important, right? These, um... Turians. Garrus. Oh, and there's Executor uh, Palin. Palin. I don't know how to say it. Um, is Garrett is he maybe a spectre because he's in very he looks like he's in more combat armor and he looks like he's in more security uniform hey there guys Saren's hiding something give me more time stall them stall the council don't be ridiculous your investigation is over Garrus uh oh Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Okay. Um, he blew it. So this guy's from CSEC as well. So you don't like him? Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Thanks, Garrus. You don't want to keep the council waiting. Sure. Uh, but I'm going to walk. <laughs> okay, so 
this the person in this hood looks kind of like the matri is that was the matriarch does she have a hood on like that or is that a um oh um uh, solarian i think that's a solarian yeah Right, this place is huge. Man, all the humans sit in a really arrogant looking way, don't they? <laughs> okay, where the hell, where the hell are we going? Right, we're, we're going straight ahead to the council chamber. Can we finally talk to a, key, uh, a keeper, please? Okay, so... CSET members, I guess, operate away from the Citadel as well, I guess. We could have rapid travelled here. Hello there, Mr. Keeper. Man, I really want to talk to these guys. Rear Admiral Koku. I'm waiting to speak with one of the Councillor's assistants. Hello there. Commander. Oh. Commander. Damn it. Can you talk to anyone in here? And the Solarians look like Jedis when they've got the hoods on. No, I just want to ask a couple of questions. I'm listening. Oh, there's Captain Anderson. Let's uh, make a quick save. Hey there, Captain. The hearing's already started. Come on. We're walking in with like four different guns. <laughs> the Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow specter and a friend. Is he? That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson. You always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. How did you get involved? The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? See? He's got a vendetta. He hates us. Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor, and mine. Stop protecting him. Saren's hiding behind his position as a Spectre. You need to open your eyes. What we need is evidence. So far, we've seen nothing. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the Beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? Yes. How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? Yeah, you're blind to the truth. You've made your decision. 
I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, giant evil looking hologram. <laughs> like he's not even trying to hide it at that point, right? It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Yeah, the Council won't help us, but uh, how are you involved with Saren in the past? Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. Council's not going to help us. We need to deal with Saren ourselves. As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Yeah, he seems like a good guy. I'll talk to him. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. Um. Come on, Udina. The, the captain does deserve better. He does deserve better here because he's, he's going to be a target for Saren, right? You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. Yeah. The ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Any other leads? Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. Okay, can we do either? Uh, what about you and Saren? You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago. I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience, no hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. So would I. Yeah, I think meh, he is a monster. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Oh, God. Um... What about Harkin? You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, <laughs> bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. Uh, they abandoned him? I thought this embassy was supposed to help humans. Harkin may be human, but he's also an ass. He's had more than his share of chances. 
Fair enough. If the embassy wasn't protecting him, he would have been fired 15 years ago. CSEC is better off without him. So why would they protect him? The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human <laughs> CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. Okay. Um, the Spectres, is there anything else we can do to infiltrate? I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. How are they chosen exactly? How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done, like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation, but with him gone, things are still up in the air. And how do they organize themselves? Do they have any kind of central hub, any central intelligence part, or are they all just uh, separate agents? What's their command structure like? There is no command right. structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. I mean, I guess it is legal, because everyone knows about them, ordained by the Council, right? They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred, but the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents, the last line of defense, the final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. Uh, do they have any means of... Uh, I guess, it, yeah, like, we already know that if a Spectre goes too far, they're dealt with by other Spectres. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue? Like Saren. It doesn't happen often. The council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Okay. So, uh, I've met Barlavon. Tell me about Barlavon. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius doesn't do anything illegal. But he knows all the loopholes. Mm. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. And, uh... The Shadow Broker? Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game. And the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics. Doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. Fair He's not a threat to anyone. Not directly. He's just a resource we can use. Or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Council and the Ambassador. Our Ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The Ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. We're too independent though, they don't like it. Maybe they'd let us join the Council if we were more willing to cooperate with the other species. Of course they would. If we did everything they told us to, they'd love to have us on the council, but it wouldn't be much of a deal for us. I understand their side. They don't want us dominating the council. It's founded on cooperation and alliances, but we have to look out for our own interests too. 
Why are we bothering then? Who cares if we get a seat on the council? What's the big deal? If the council passes a ruling on an interstellar matter, we have to follow it. We don't have the fleets or political allies to defy them. Mm. Once we get a seat on the council, we'll be able to influence those rulings. Protect our own interests. No more jumping through hoops whenever we want something. Take this mess we're in now. If humanity had a seat on the council, we'd just send the Citadel fleet out to take care of Saren and his Geth. Problem solved. Okay, so we've got lots to look into. We've got Harkin that will lead to the CSEC operative, Balavon leading us to the Shadow Broker. Okay. Alright, thanks, Captain. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. Excellent. Okay, two Paragon points, apparently. Some more XP. Okay, Journal. So, for, yeah, for Garrus, we need to speak to Harkin. Speak to Balavon for the broker. And, uh, yeah, investigate further for Saren. And the Codex, what have we got? Oh, well, the Solarians. The Asari. The second. Uh, the the council Solarian guy, I'm sure his name was on there. Um, looked awesome with the hood and the and the markings, right? You look really cool. The second species to join the Citadel. The Solarians are warm-blooded amphibians with a hyperactive metabolism. Solarians think fast, talk fast, and move fast. To Solarians, other species seem sluggish and dull-witted. Unfortunately, their metabolic speed leaves them with a relatively short lifespan. Solarians over the age of 40 are a rarity. Interesting. The Solarians were responsible for advancing the development of the primitive Krogan species to use as soldiers during the Ranchi Wars. They were also behind the creation of the Genophage bioweapon the Turians used to quell the Krogan rebellions several centuries later. Right. Okay, so that's pretty unethical what they did with the Krogans then. Solarians are known for their observational capability and non-linear thinking. This manifests as an aptitude for research and espionage. They're constantly experimenting and inventing, and it's generally accepted that they always know more than they're letting on. Right, so they're just everything's fast because their their life is short. Um, interesting. Okay, so we know what we've got to do. Uh, I did. I thought that it was a bit over the top for <laughs> the Seren to. I know how to say it now. It's like Seren. It's like S E R E N, not the A. Seren. I think it's because in an American accent you say it more like Seren. Uh, it just doesn't make much sense in my silly accent, right? Um. So. Yeah, I just thought it was a bit comical how we had like a giant red hologram. I mean, he was like. <laughs> he was like a projection of Beelzebub, right? I mean, couldn't have got any more caricaturish, right? It's like, no, I'm not evil. <laughs> Why are you being projected as like the embodiment of evil? It was just, it was just a bit funny. Um, okay, so uh, I think, guys, huh? What? What, Ashley? I bet all these staircases aren't just for show. They make for good defensive positions if this place is ever attacked. <laughs> That's like in a game when you walk into a level and you see all co you see cover scattered everywhere. That's what Ashley just did. That was that was like really meta, <laughs> kind of accidentally. Uh, hang on, what are you guys doing? That guy's up to something. What guy? The one over by the keeper. Huh? What? Oh no, I wasn't. Never mind. What are you doing? Hey, sure bad. Oh, we... Um, yes, is there something you want? Why are you following the Keepers? Why are you so interested in the Keepers? Keepers? I've got no interest in the keep. Don't get coy. I know what I saw. I, uh... I'm not so sure I should be talking to you about this. Why? We're just talking. Is there something wrong with that? No. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. 
I'm using a small scanner to gather readings on the keepers. So far I've had mixed results. I find it difficult to get near the creatures. Uh, yeah, why all the secrecy? Why were you being so secretive about it, though? Well, technically we're not supposed to disturb yeah. the keepers. I don't really think my scanning disturbs them, but the authorities might disagree. I'd like to do it more openly, but it's not really worth getting arrested over. Ah, uh, why not? I can help. I can help you out. I'm not worried about the authorities. I don't even know who you are. I'm with the Alliance. I'm Commander Shepard with the Alliance military. Hmm. Well, I, I suppose I could use the help. You'll need this. It's the scanning device I developed. Activate it each time you see a keeper. All collected oh. data will automatically upload to my database. I'll even send a few credits your way for each unique scan. You're doing this just for scientific research? What are you doing with the data once you've scanned it? Trying to learn whatever I can about the keepers. We see them working everywhere, yet we know so little about them. Hmm. I'm a scientist. I want to know what makes them tick. Sure. I should get going then. Yes, I have much work myself. So long, and good luck with the scanning. I really like the Solarians, man. They look awesome. Okay. Uh, oh, the Keepers. The Elko. Nice. So, when the Asari discovered the Citadel, they also discovered the Keepers. A docile, multi-limbed insect race that seemingly exists only to maintain and repair the Great Prothean Station. Early attempts to communicate with or study the Keepers were failures, and it's now illegal to interfere with or impede Keeper activity. Because they're completely non-threatening, Keepers have become virtually invisible to everyone else. Similarly, they seem indifferent to other species, except for their tendency to help new arrivals integrate themselves into the Citadel. No matter how many Keepers die due to old age, violence or accident, they remain a constant number. No one has discovered the source of new Keepers, but some hypothesize they are genetic constructs, biological androids created somewhere deep in the inaccessible core of the Citadel itself. What? <laughs> Wow, that is so mysterious. The fact that there are millions of people living here and no one knows how this place, like, work, how it, like, is powered. There's, like, an inaccessible core and there's this mysterious race of eight-limbed, uh, eight-limbed people who are vital to the maintenance of the whole place. What the hell? <laughs> That is awesome. That's kind of mind-blowing, right? That's really awesome because it introduces, like, this element of, like, real element of mystery. Because I think, like, the, the, the thing that you can kind of... The, 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 it's just a thing that's really important in kind of sci-fi of this nature, right? is to have mysteries like this. Man. We really are just kind of... All... Everyone here... Like, no one is here on merit. Everyone is... Kind of... Punching well above their weight, aren't they? Like, nobody... Invented any of this technology who is currently using it. That is fascinating, man. That is fascinating. Right. Right, guys. Uh, I'm going to leave the episode there. Uh, just because before we start, it's going to take some time to start anything else. And the lighting has gone a bit weird in here. Right, so we'll leave it there. Uh, we met with the council. We've got some leads to help further investigate Saren. So, yeah, we'll pick it up from here next time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave me a thumbs up if you did. And just remember, everybody, never trust an on-crate. I'll uh, see you back in the Citadel.